well, let's go here. Mirror random. Okay, let's. Do oh, I guess I don't have it downloaded. Let's hope that's it. Let us hope that is the problem. All right, try it again. You can observe, but you have to download the mod. Okay, yeah. I must not. Have, I thought I had it downloaded. Um, maybe I uninstalled it on accident. Okay, we're good to go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go for the first match. Mirror Random, China versus Abbasid. Now, for those who are not aware, Mirror Random is a community-made map. I don't know who made it off the top of my head. But the map is, uh, as, we, as it says, Mirror Random. Although this one looks to have bugged out a little bit, which I have heard happens in this one. So the resources should be the same. But we're going to notice that Puppy Paw here is going to have two relics. And it looks like Wham's only going to have one. Unless I'm blind. What should I have, what should I have asked you, Sniper? Oh, that's all good. I didn't think about it <clears throat> until 50 minutes before. Anyway, so this map is random. This river here isn't necessarily going to be here. This has, I believe, hundreds of different generations for this map. I can already tell you... I am a little sad for this generation because this is pretty much Mongolian Heights with four access points. And I say four, not five, because this bridge is covered by trees on both sides, which is actually hilarious. Uh, so there's four sides on this one. Mongolian ponds. That's, I like it. Uh, but in general, you notice they both have two hunts. Two hunts. Two berries. Two berries, actually three, three berries, and then there's, they each have a market by their side, and their gold, their large gold mines are here, here, and yeah. So in general, very mirrored. Let's just go with that. There's a little pond here they can go fishing, and so I'm very curious how they're both gonna play this out, right? Because when they go into this map, they have no idea if there's gonna be water or not. So they just found out when they put their scouts across this, the crossing here. And same with this. They won't know this is here until they scout it. It kind of makes this an interesting map because you, if you don't prepare for water, you're probably not going to go water. Because why, w why would you prepare for water if you're, there's not going to be water? Then you're just super behind if your opponent doesn't. It makes this kind of an interesting map because you can't pre-prepare whether you're playing a water map like this or a land map like Dry Arabia. And you also don't know if your sieve's going to benefit from this. <clears throat> I will say... On this map in particular, how it generated, I would say it favors China, because they can just wall these, they can just wall these uh, crossings over, and again, they don't have to do this one. It's already covered. Does this map not only spawn water? Correct. This map can be a pure land map. At least I'm 90% sure that's the case. We do see that Puppy Paw over here is actually putting. He's getting an early barracks. In the Dark Age, and he's keeping five on wood, which is kind of interesting because Wham is just doing a standard age up timing. Very. I wonder why. I'm guessing Puppy Paw might be going for a tower rush, judging by the amount that they have five on wood still. No, no. They have no gold at all right now. Puppy has zero gold, but he's not making spears yet either. Oh no! Nope, there we go. Uh. Any special show match rules? Uh, there's no special match uh, rules, no. I guess they, I mean, they can't play the same Civ, but there's no Civ bans. <laughs> so, I'm guessing this is a tower rush, judging that we're seeing Spearmen. It wouldn't make sense for Puppy Paw to go blindly counter a dock because the odds of Wham being prepared for a dock aren't likely. So I think this is the correct play here. Or the correct idea. And yeah, there we go. There's the villager. The thing is, though, Wham is going to be feudal age. How long do we think is that? In about 30 seconds? I don't know if this tower rush is going to accomplish much. Because once he... Uh... Wham said I forgot water in chat. Uh, well, this map doesn't necessarily uh, come with water, though. At least, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Or either way, if they they haven't restarted it, so if they want to rehost it, they can. I leave that up to their discretion at this point. But I I think at this point he's committed to his 
tower rush. Oh, by the way, Magic, thank you for hosting the stream. I appreciate it. Hope you had a good stream, and welcome, everyone. We're just doing a best of seven hundred twenty dollars show match between Puppy Paw and Wham. The first map here is uh, Mirror Random. And, uh, yeah. Currently, Puppy Paw is tower rushing. And Wham is rushing out a barracks, or a archery range. To counter it, obviously. So, this might get up. I think it is going to get up. But I don't think any other towers will. Assuming that Wham... Because Wham is aware of this. His scout sees it. Back at home, we see that Puppy Paw is preparing to go feudal. So he's not investing too heavily into this. He's just investing, it looks like, four spears, three spears. Three spears, one villager, and a tower. And then he's going to go feudal himself. So I don't think, I don't think Puppy Paw's in trouble. I don't think Wham's in trouble. Uh, I don't, this tower is going to be kind of annoying, but it's not going to do any damage. Actually, I guess what it does do is it prevents Wham from taking a second TC. It does, I just realized that this was stone that he towered, so Wham can't get a second TC. Because there's no other stone nearby that I'm seeing. Oh, except right here. So he's just going to go here, take the stone, use the villagers to deny this. But it still kind of delays it, right? We're at 5 minutes and 50 seconds, and Wham's only just now starting to mine stone for a second TC. So I think that was Puppy's goal, was to just delay the second TC as long as possible, and I think he succeeded in that goal. Let's see, did Wham get... Where's his... Uh, there's his mill. Again, sorry guys, I'm not a professional caster, so there's going to be some jerkiness in the camera movement. He did go wheelbarrow first. So, to give you guys perspective, if you go wheelbarrow and go second TC as Abbasid, you can have it starting started creation at around 6 minutes. Might be a little bit later than 6 minutes. Um, and we're at 6.30, and we still don't have enough stone, nor wood. Yo, magic. Thank you again for the raid, by the way. And now we got Feudal Age Puppy Paw here. Yes, this is the Battle of Brothers. Twin Brothers, to be precise. Oh, little sloppy from Puppy Paw to lose his scout there. Let's see, is there anything else of note? Four spears. So he actually made five spearmen. And he has one scout alive still. What map is this? This is Mirror Random. Unfortunately, we got a, an extreme Mongolian Heights. So let's see. What do we think? So it looks like Puppy's going to go 2 TC as well. Wham's about to have the resources for a second TC here in just a moment. Looks like they're both going to kind of go into a booming play style after the initial rush. But I would say that this actually favors Puppy Paw because he's about to have enough for a second TC as well. And it's 7 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Which would equal, you know, so he should be, he's going to get it ahead of Wham here. Which was the whole point of the tower rush. Uh, yeah, I did show it earlier, but yes, there is fish here. They have, they each should have 13. This one has 12, so uh, unfortunately for Wham, he got screwed by one fish, but that doesn't really matter in this game, judging how they're playing this. So we have the second TC coming out for Puppy Paw. Doesn't look like he's planning on going for a third. Let's look at Wham here. Wham is going for a third TC. As we can tell, 16 on wood. He actually took all of his villagers off of food. This is probably to get as much wood as possible because he's about to have the gold. <laughs> and yeah, for those who have not seen it yet, this is our, our fifth bridge crossing. It is covered by trees, so ne neither player can do anything with this bridge at this point in the game. And there's four crossings. We actually see Puppy Paw going for water. So he's going 2TC. Doesn't look like he's going song quite yet into a quick into a dock to get water i think this is actually kind of a badly placed dock he's only getting access to this fish otherwise he has to go pretty far actually to get the fish over here and there's only there's really not much fish over here it's only there's only eight whereas on this side it looks like there's uh, nine so a little bit more i guess one over there although i didn't highlight this one so we do see 3 TC. And I, and yeah, so I think if they're going to go water, I'm surprised that Puppy didn't go for his lake here. There's more water for starters. Although I guess he's going to eliminate two with a dock. 
um, and it's safer. But this can also deny crossings between these two these two crossings, right? He can make a, a junk ship or a war junk later on, and he can make sure that his opponent can't go across this area, and then he just focuses on defending this with his normal troops. Assuming he doesn't wall anytime soon. We see Song Dynasty coming down, which is going to allow villagers to be created at 13 seconds instead of 20 seconds, which is going to really help him. And Wham has his three TCs down now. Let's look to see what Wham's planning. Wham is placing a bunch of military production and is making military. He might be planning a feudal timing and not going fast castle age like a lot of Abbasid players do when they go multiple TCs. You see he's secured this. There's some horsemen from Puppy trying to do raiding, but that hasn't really done much. Wham's got his side pretty covered. And if we look at Puppy Paw, it looks to me like he is planning on going castle. I don't think he is... It doesn't look to me like he is saving for any feudal aggression or anything. Let's actually... It kind of bugs out a little bit. But he does see units from Wham being created here. And now he sees a ram as well. I don't know how accurate this is. I don't know if this is just bugged out. It is possible. You never know with the observer tool, unfortunately. But if it is accurate, he is aware that Wham is not only making units, but he is making a, a battering ram. I think this favors Puppy. if Because Puppy can go castle here in the next probably 30 seconds. And if we look at the villager count, it's 53 to 44. So Puppy has a 12 villager lead, 11 villager lead right now, and he's about to be castle or about to be going castle. I think I like Puppy's position quite a bit here. Once he gets the castle, he'll be able to spam men at arms, and that's going to pretty much take out any aggression from uh, Wham if he's planning on doing a huge feudal timing. Also, he'll have access to nested bees, so that'll also help. Although it is looking like Wham might be saving for Castle Age now too. Maybe he just wanted to get rid of the tower. Smart move to repair this ram, not to just let it die. Uh, no, because this is, it is cheaper to repair your ram than it is to build a new one. A, a lot cheaper. I think it, it's a really cheap... If one villager repairs this, I think it costs, I don't know, like 20 wood or something. It's very cheap compared to building a whole new one from what I've seen. And we have the clock tower. Going age three right now. And he's putting in another barracks, so he's going to go for the palace guards once he gets there. Surprisingly, I'm actually surprised he's only putting five villagers on here. I guess he's not too worried about any aggression from Wham. And Wham's about to hit or go castle age himself, which makes sense. By the way, look at this poor little sheep here. It has to wait until these villagers gather all the way through here before it is free at last. The villager count is 57 for Wham. 69 for Puppy, so a 12 villager lead, and I think it's going to maintain that way. We have no upgrades in the Blacksmith from Puppy at this time. I'm a little surprised he hasn't gotten plus one uh, ranged armor, at least. Wham is officially aging up, and he has only gotten Siege Engineering at this point as well. And he is pushing out. Again, this shouldn't do anything. Puppy just hit Castle Age. He can supervise these me these palace guards out in like 11 seconds. And he has three barracks. This should do very little damage. Maybe he'll get a villager or two. Um, a little sloppy, I think, from Puppy. But I don't think it'll do much more than two villagers. And you're right, Colonial. Abbasid does have Siege Engineering. I was just testing the chat. You guys passed the test. Congratulations. Oh, looks like we might have three. Nope. Okay, so two villagers were killed. 79 for Puppy Paw. 66. So it's... Puppy Paw is still in a fantastic position eco-wise. Um, this ram is going here. If Puppy realizes it, yeah, he's just going to pull the villagers and burn this down. This is not going to do anything at all. We see knights coming out. Um, I think, I'm guessing this is more for raiding because there's way too many pikemen to want to engage that. And as we predicted, that, that ram just got annihilated. We now see that Wham is actually walling now. He wants to prevent the palace guards or knights from going into his base. He's also walling here. 
Has Wham scouted? He knows that his opponent's on water, but I don't think he knows the dock is right here. He actually does not know there's a wall here. And we do have plus one melee damage coming in. And it looks like the ranged armor's next. Or is that the castle age one? I, can, I think it's the castle age one. <laughs> Thank you, the damn souls. <laughs> and we have plus one ranged attack by Wham at this point. Defensive keep from Puppy. Again, at this point, Puppy's goal is to get to the late game. China's late game is, is I would say, the strongest in the game. Uh, if not, it's arguably the second at worst. I think there's arguments that English may have a better late game, but I think that's only if gold runs out. At least in my opinion. This attack got cleaned up. Puppy's already at 96 villagers and Wham is at 72. That is a 24 villager lead for Puppy at this point. And is Puppy still only on two TCs, right? Yeah. Looks like Wham actually has some idle town center time. I wonder if he forgot to put this in his control group. He doesn't have He doesn't have any villagers coming out of these two town centers right now. Okay, he does from this one and he does from his main TC. But he, this one is not producing villagers. Oh, looks like it is now. So if he did forget to do it, he fixed his correction or mistake. Most pros think Abbasid is better if there's wood available. I don't know what pros have said that. Almost everyone I've I've heard at the pro level has agreed that China's number one or number two, but in the late game. But I'd be surprised if uh, if it is different, I guess. And then we do see a war junk, which we did predict might happen at some point to control these crossings. He's going to use it to to kill this Palestine gate and stop any units from harassing his walls. So Puppy at this point just has to worry about these this side because he has control of the other side. We see the granaries, filling them with farms. I don't know if these are too close or not though. Did I, did I say Palestine Gate? This is mere random, Yoshimesta. This is mere random. This map is not necessarily a specific... Uh, it doesn't spawn like this every time. For those who are just now tuning in. So at this point, it's kind of look. We have some long distance stone gathering from Puppy. A little bit of a mistake not to notice that. He's grabbing his relics. Unfortunately for Wham, he's only got one relic to grab. And they each get one sacred site, which I forgot to mention earlier. Interestingly enough, Puppy never took his deer or his berries over here. Or at least, yeah, no, he never took his berries or deer. Whereas Wham is on his deer and he's doing a farm transition as well. At least a little one, not very much. Not as much as Puppy. Puppy's on a much bigger farm transition at this point in time. And he's also at 117 villagers to Wham's 86. Now we see some stone walls coming along. I think right now I definitely favored Puppy's position. It just kind of depends on who's going to... Are any of them saving for Imperial yet? Doesn't look like it. There's just a little monk here. Just needs to drop off that relic, but hasn't done so yet. Puppy Paw has both his relics. He's starting to pull out the siege. Now I will say in the Castle Age, I actually do not think this is a bad matchup for Abbasid in the in the Castle Age. Just because the Abbasid can build their siege, so they can build a lot of springles and kind of outmass China's siege, especially since their clock tower is only one siege workshop instead of the three it was before. And it also doesn't have the they can't get as many uh, of the clock tower springles as well. So I actually think in a Siege Warfare in the Castle Age, I do favor Wham's position here. And I would say I agree with Wham's decision to go for a castle timing. Uh, that's what I would personally do, is I think you want to try to kill China in the Castle Age and not get it to an Imperial Age. 
Especially, I think, on this map because it's just so easy for um, it to just be choked off. We see more stone walls coming up for Puppy. But it doesn't look like he's committing yet. I mean, he does have to take care of this keep, right? That's the other. That's kind of the uh, the other upside of this map. A keep on this side, a keep on this side, stone walls, and a, a war junk. It forces a siege response by Wham. He cannot really cross this without. If he tried to run past this, he's just going to lose a ton of his units for free. And then there's also the nested bees here as well. Graphics are way too good here. <laughs> So is mirror random mega random? Pretty much U60. That's exactly what this map is. It can be water or land. Ah, I did see that game want to play. Uh, but I didn't really pay too much attention to it, so I can't give advice on it. Uh, I think you going Spears was a mistake, though. Anyway, so we see Imperial Age coming out for Puppy. We see Trebuchets out for Wham. It, Wham could go Imperial Age, and I think, I think he's going to. His food ego isn't the best. He's only got 17 villagers on food at this point. But it does look like Wham is going to go for Imperial, and he is going to Stonewall as well, so that he can at least protect himself from raids. What's interesting is they both have plenty of wood. This map actually has a lot of wood, or this generation of the map has a lot of wood. Uh, there were no map seeds. Um, so this wood line, I don't think, like, for example, this front wood line with this bridge, I don't think it's going to be a factor in this game, unless this game ends up being, like, a really long game. Actually, let's see... What is he aging up with? The military wing? So he didn't go with the trade wing. So he's not... So Wham at this point is not planning on trading yet. Puppy Paw is Imperial Age and he's starting his clock tower bombards. He's got 42... He's got 140 villagers. So he's got plenty of resources coming in. And he's got complete map control on his side of the map. There's no way Wham can do any damage to him until... Unless he decides to attack over here, but then Puppy has plenty of time to react. <laughs> he banged these guys by the minute. <laughs> you know it. <clears throat> Looks like we have a bunch of seized workshops here. My guess is he's is Wham's gonna pump out the culverins. I mean, you have to, right? As Abbasid, your best chance to counterplay China Siege is to get culverins. Um, so that's probably what he's gonna do, because I believe the bombard for China has the same range as the culverin. Anyone in chat can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Let's look at Wham's economy. He's got 116 villagers. I believe he has stopped making villagers at this point. I think he just kind of capped out there. Unlike Puppy, who's definitely boomed hard. He'll probably delete villagers later in the game. Ballsy little clock tower bombard here. But there, it does have backup. Yeah, okay. This is good. This is. Oh, look at that damage. Those nested bees just absolutely told that army to get away. That was a pretty good bait on Puppy's side. So I was wrong. It looks like Pup or uh, Wham is going Springolds. I'm a little surprised at the, the Springold choice. I feel like Colburns are better, but then again, Colburns are more expensive. So I guess it kind of goes down either way, but we know how strong Clock Tower Bombards are, and I just don't know if Springolds cut it. Doesn't even end up killing it. Wham's Bank is already kind of... He's got a bunch of units on the way, but I think this is looking pretty bad for him right now. Wham, our Puppy has a very good bank. He's pumping out units, has multiple Bombards on the way, pushing this zone. Wham's about to lose his siege workshops, which is going to be no more anti-siege from this department. 
Now let's see what he's doing back at base. Is he rebuilding them anywhere? He does have the wood for it. He's trying to spam out archery ranges. And it looks like he got rid of the siege there. I mean, Wham's army's not too bad. They're equal in military. Puppy does have the better eco, though, at least for now. Not really seeing too much from... Oh, we're seeing a horseman switch from Wham. I, I'm trying not to mix up their names. I have to think about it for a second. And we also see a horseman switch from Puppy Paw. They both kind of have the same thought process there. They both decide to go for horsemen. It's a decent counter to crossbows, assuming there's not, you know, depending on the numbers. And we have a... Uh, I think that's the... This is the University for Abyssin, I'm pretty sure. I didn't know they named it the Madrasa, though. Which I probably said that wrong. Alright, we have a second Bombard coming through. More horsemen, more men-at-arms. Wham's gonna be pushed off the stone here. And again, like I said, he's gonna lose these. Ooh. I, I think this game is not looking good for Wham. He has no food bank. He does have crossbows, so he's gonna hold off this attack. But we see outposts, we see a keep, we see a forward keep coming. Uh, looks like it kind of bugged out and showed two. But the supplies in the bank kind of tell the story here. China boomed better. China has a strong late game. And I think at this point, I think Wham is dead. We are seeing a little bit of raiding from Puppy Paw. Um, drove him off the farms here. Drove him off the stone. We do see that Wham is down to 90 villagers, so he lost about 30 villagers so far. Lost his university. Trying to hold on. This area is the only secure location for him. See more units coming through from Puppy. A defensive keep from Wham. But I just, I don't think it's going to matter here. We've got, we're up to three Bombards at this point. I don't know, does he have all the university techs? Well, GG. The first game is over. Wham! Puppy Paw wins game one on Mirror Random. All right, let's update the score. This is the best of seven, King uh, King Rain. So this was just game one. So, as we can kind of see from the economy tab here, just look at Puppy. We can see how Puppy Paw really boomed. 9,000 more food, 8,000 more gold, you know, 1,000 more wood, and then 500 more stone. And if we just look at the villager grout, wait, can we look at it? Yeah, we can. And you just kind of see, this is where the Song Dynasty really kicks in with that 2TC Song Dynasty boom. Like, you just kind of see the villager difference. I do think Wham forgot to potentially do his third one. I'm not sure. Uh, this is a best of seven. All right, so game one went to Puppy Paw. The second game is going to be Gold Valley. I don't know if they've started yet or not. Nope, looks like they're looks like they just started. So we might have made it just in time for game two. All right. Wham versus Puppy Paw game two, Roos versus Abbasid. This is a matchup that I personally think favors Roos, but things might be changing, you know, as the meta evolves, who knows? So for those who are not aware, Gold Valley, for, for those of you who played Age of Empires 2, is kind of like Gold Rush. Uh, and I think there are wolves on this map, but we'll take a look here. So you'll notice there's a ton of big gold, gold veins in the middle. But the one thing you will notice is it's impossible to hold this with one keep. I mean, there's how many? Let's look at how many big gold mines. It's early in the game. There's no reason to pay too much attention to what they're doing. I just, okay. So the middle has 12, 12 big gold mines. I'm paying the $120, sweet Vienna. I am paying it. And there's three sacred sites. Here, the middle, and here. Yeah, I made sure this wasn't like King of the Hill. This is game two. Uh, the score should be updated. I should make sure real quick. Yep, score is updated. 
Um, and so each player is going to get one close gold mine, you know, like every other map. But you're going to notice their other gold mines are pretty far. And I would favor the Roos position in this because Roos has a very good way of uh, controlling the map early and trying to deny, you know, the Abyssin player from expanding past his initial berries. Abyssin's food is way out here. So he, he doesn't have very deers. He does have a little berry bush over here. And no problem, Jaded Cross. And we have no idea if these are going to be in the Red Bull qualifiers. I picked these two maps because they look like fun maps for to see. Uh, the, the next four games will be on normal maps. And then if it does go to a last match, if it does go to game seven, it is mere random for game seven. I would say also that Roost does have the better spawn here. He's kind of got a little back deer um, and his second berry bush is a little closer as well uh, but overall the name of this game and we're gonna see the relics actually we see four relics here on one side kind of funny one to each player two kind of neutral i would say and then one boy out here just by itself and as we can see there's a bunch of wolves over here let's look at wham's bounty he's at 215 and he's still got a whole deer pack over here. So Wham's going to be sitting at probably a good 250 or 270 or so. Uh, 285. And then plus the sheep he has. Which he has four sh sheep still alive. So he'll be at 305 once everything's done. And I have no idea who decides the maps for the Red Bull qualifiers. I can tell you this much. It's not me. I have no say whatsoever in that one. All right, so we just kind of see scouting around. Nothing too exciting. Two trade posts. My guess, if I had to guess what, what direction this game is going to go, I think Wham is going to be very aggressive. Well, then again, I say that, but I've seen Wham play very more macro-oriented when I think he's going to be aggressive, so I'm not sure. But my guess is he's going to be aggressive here, kind of with the standard Iaga's build, potentially. Um, I think his goal is going to be to deny food for abyssid you know deny this berries that's all he has to do he denies this berries these berries and these hunts abyssid's gonna starve really quick uh, because there's only two food sources abyssid has i hate that i can't click that sometimes he has eight sheep and then this berry bush which is you know four small berries too large it's really not that much food when you think about it it goes by really quick so what Puppy's going to want to do here is he is going to want to either get access to this or try to break the push here to get access to this. I wouldn't really be surprised if Wham decided to pull his villagers and just take the hunts here. Um, but they could be a little risky as well. And this would be actually be a really sick hunting cabin right here. Imagine a hunting cabin right here plus a boar. That actually is pretty beautiful. But let's see, where's Wham going? It looks like he is going to go for the boar. Which again, makes sense. Isn't starting berries and saving sheep for be later better versus aggressive? Uh, it depends on the situation in the matchup, I think, or what the game plan is. A lot of Abbasid players lately, me, myself have included, have started going for sheep first. So that you can get this lumber mill uh, without long distance wood gathering. I have been kind of liking that more again lately. And then as we see, taking the boar. Very standard roost play. Always take that boar. There's really not much Abbasid can do to deny this. I mean, what Puppy could try if he wanted to is he could try to tower this area. But it would be very risky and I don't think it would work out. Especially since they are already feudal age. What are my thoughts on this map? Personally, I actually like this map. But I also haven't played on it. So maybe I'd hate it after a week of playing it. Not sure. But I do like it because... You know, it's three sacred sites. The gold is in the middle, but it's not like one keep denies all the gold, right? One keep here only denies these two golds. So you have to, like, really put keeps everywhere if you wanted to deny all the gold or mass tower. But you can't just easily deny all the gold in the center. Obviously, some civs would definitely, like, I think this is going to hurt Abbasid potentially the one of the most in the game. Uh, because, you know, typically it is a little bit harder to get that map control sometimes until you get to Castle Age. And as we can see, Wham is going to be very aggressive here. 
He is not going for double Broadax, it looks like. I have seen more and more Roost players kind of go away from the double Broadax. He might change his mind to do it later, but I, this is something I have been seeing more lately. They've kind of stopped rushing this like they used to for a little bit. And we're going to see two archery ranges and a barracks. Let's see what Puppy's up to. Puppy's going to go for a stable, and he does have his second TC up and running. No, neither, neither trademark trade post is being blocked by trees and actually are these stealth trees does it say if you click on one i don't know if this is stealth or not i don't think so i don't think these are stealth though that's just a random gibberish i'm, pu I'm putting out right now so i'll be very curious how wham's gonna play or how puppy's gonna defend this this is a very hard push in my opinion for abbasid um, i think this is a great second town center placement by puppy i think he kind of has to do this it is out of the way of the attack so for Wham to attack, he'd have to go all the way around to pressure the second TC. So this makes us an even better spot because that's quite a rush distance actually to get to that second town center. The other smart thing that Puppy is doing is he's placing his production buildings in the back. The best way as a defensive civilization to hold against aggressive civs is to place your military buildings behind your base, not in front. If you put military buildings in front, that's an easy target for Rams to take them out, and then you have to rebuild them anyway. So this is a very good spot to put, and I think more and more players as time has gone on have started to do this. It's just the best way to defend against an aggression. It's a lot harder for Wham to just run in here, have his Ram take these out. And yeah, no, this is not Stealth Force, by the way. I'm like 99% positive. And we see two barracks, three archery ranges. Now, I just want to state, last time I did this to Puppy Paw, he tricked me and canceled one of his stables and then made five archery ranges, and and uh, that held my attack against him. It was a very rude thing to do to trick me like that. So, wham, win this one. No. Uh, this is Gold Valley. Which is pretty much like Gold Rush or Golden Pit on AoE 2. Let's see, Scout here. So he's keeping a good eye. Puppy's taking a making an outpost. And now we see three archery ranges coming out. Or I'm sorry, not three archery ranges, another archery range coming out. And it looks like Wham might actually go for that second TC. So this is gonna be I mean, Puppy wants to hold this, right? He wants to keep his second town center alive. He wants to keep these berries because this is his only other source of food. If he loses control of this and this, he has no food income and he's pretty much dead. Looks like Wham changed his mind. Puppy's trying to distract him with a little bit of raiding. Again, a smart move to do. So always take a couple horsemen. You know, try to distract your opponent. You'll be surprised at how often your opponent will mess up, even at the high, even at a high level, if you just have a couple horsemen or some horsemen harassing villagers, right? It forces a reaction by your opponent. This horseman here is perfect. It's going to stop Wham from taking these deer without dealing with this horseman. Of course, horsemen don't do, do the best against villagers, but it's still better than nothing. Uh, sorry for the dirtiness of the camera. Again, not the not a professional caster. Uh, thank you for the tier 1 subscription, Tom Bomba Dillo. I do appreciate it. All right, so we see the first ram out in the field. Let's see what other upgrades he has. He is getting plus one ranged. We see oh, still only two archery ranges for puppy. No blacksmith, unless I'm blind. Let's make sure we're not blind. Okay, we're not blind. No blacksmith. And this is perfect by Wham. He's just going to deny these berries so that when these berries come out... And we got a harass here as well. Three archers. Uh, I'm, I think puppy's dead here. I don't think he has a way to hold this. To be honest, looking at this map, especially this generation, this was not a good map spawn for Abyssin. This was a pretty bad spawn for him. Oh, but he's going to get the ram, so that's going to buy him some precious time. But we do see puppies kind of starting to run out of food. Oh, these villagers are still... Ooh, he has not reacted to this raid here. He's lost a lot of villagers. These, these archers, MVPs. Oh, there we go. There's the reaction. 42 villagers for Puppy, 33 for Wham. So there's still an 11 villager lead for Puppy, but he has taken a good amount of damage here, and he lost access to this food. I mean, he's... How much? How many sheep does he have left? He still has 7 sheep left, so he's not going to be running out of food yet. And we see Wham has decided to focus on this second TC to take it out. 
A uh, nice thing for Puppy is he has taken a lot of the food there. And we still see more aggression, more archers, more spearmen. And another ram being built to take out this second TC. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think Puppy can hold this. I think he's going to lose this TC. I don't think there's much he can do about it. He is doing the smart thing, though, um, and forcing a reaction from Wham. He's going to take out this area. I don't know. Is that boar gone? I think he got the entire boar, so losing, moving the villagers isn't going to hurt him. He did scout it with his scout, so he's going to try to kill these villagers. And he's just... I think he kind of... Ex ooh, ooh. Late reaction from Puppy again. That was a good seven, six, seven villagers, I think. He's now down to 43 villagers. And uh, Wham is at 36, having lost some. There wasn't another raid I missed, is there? I'm not a professional uh, observer either, obviously, if I'm missing raids. 37 villagers to 44. Ah, well, let's rephrase that. Way less than that. Oof. All right, we have 37 villagers to 38. Wham now has not only a better military, but he has more villagers. I don't think there's much uh, Abbasid can do, or yeah, Puppy can do, because he's only got these berries left, and what Ram Wham, I almost called him Ram, is going to do is he's going to just backdoor Ram these. It's kind of unfortunate for him, because uh, or unfortunate for Puppy, that he can't really do anything about this. He doesn't have the army to contest. So he's going to just try to take on reinforcements. Which is actually getting pretty sizable here. But there actually isn't any spearmen. So he could clear this. But I don't think it's going to really do too much. Because we still have 16 spearmen. 27 archers. And the upgrade for the blacksmith just got denied puppy. Who does have plus one defense. And Wham has both of his upgrades. And now Puppy's going to lose all his production. Let's look at their resource count here. There are 41-49, 40-42. So they're very close villager-wise. But Puppy's army is starting to get a little bit, you know, it's starting to get up there. He has 25 archers. And Wham is at 27. Now this actually could be getting dangerous. Uh, without the reinforcements, if Puppy can get enough units and take this out, he actually might be able to recover from this situ situation. So I'm just looking to make sure Wham doesn't have any units anywhere else. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. But losing all that production sucks. So now we have 34 archers. I actually, Wham needs to get out of here. He's not going to win this fight. He's going to lose these rams, and Wham actually, uh, yeah, he just needs to get out of here at this point. He's a consolidate his force. I have to say, Puppy did an, despite losing a lot of villagers, of course, Puppy did an excellent defense there. I saw the chat saying he was out, but he held. He held the push. Um, and now he's at, you know, they're pretty even. 43 villagers for Puppy, 45 for Wham. Wham does have 39 army to 46 of Puppy. So, this is actually turned into a pretty close game. I would say they're both... The only advantage that Wham has right now, though, is his eco has been undisturbed. For the most part. Uh, although, except... Ooh, looks like we might see a couple of dead villagers here. Let's see. Does Wham react in time? <clears throat> Losing one. Let's look at out where else. Oh, we do have a second TC from, from Wham. We, I did miss this. So Wham decided, instead of opting to go Castle Age, he decided to get a second TC. And he's doing a Knight Switch. Which, by the way, if you didn't know, Knights counter both Horsemen and Archers. So they're both going to lose their production, though, here. he's gonna Wham's going to lose all his Archery Ranges, Blacksmiths, and his zero gold generating Hunting Cabin. The nice thing for Puppy, though, is he has secured another food source. He is almost out of Sheep. He ran out of berries there. He's only got 86 food on this, so this was desperately needed. He needed to retain map control to get some food. We do see a camel archer. It does provide a 20% damage <clears throat> debuff. Apologies. 
um, to cavalry, but I don't think it's that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. I think it, I think this is an excellent. I mean, for despite Puppy's situation, he played he defended very very well, and now he's got a pretty scary army. But on the other side of the field, Wham is not out of this game. Like I said, he has a second TC. He is he has a more villagers than the Abbasid player, and he's pumping out knights. And we do not see any barracks coming down for Puppy at this point. I don't even know. Let's see. Is Puppy even aware? Puppy is not even aware that there are stables on the map right now. He doesn't even know about the second TC. He is in the dark. He has no idea what Wham is up to. Uh, whoops. Did not mean to do that. <clears throat> so Wham may have the better eco now. But his military is, you know, it is decently smaller. Oh, looks like we are... Puppy is going to lose this small force. I think a night charge would kill that camel archer regardless. But there are 16 horsemen, which I think beat five knights, I'm pretty sure. Now we see outposts coming out from Puppy Paw, and he is securing his food source. Wham again has had, for the most part, pretty undisturbed food gathering. He's on two hunts. He took the boar. He could take this, or he could take the second boar in the future. Looks like he caught some military units out in the middle there. And now Puppy's walling. Let's see, his Puppy hasn't remade his second TC. I didn't think so. Let's see, is he going Castle Age yet? Now Puppy is on the way to, to Castle Age. Oh, Wham never did... No, yes, he scouted it, but it's not showing on the map for him, potentially. But we're going to have a Castle Age puppy. So, this could be dangerous, right? He could add in Camel Riders. Well, let's see. He has only one stable, actually. I take that back. He's not. He can't really without making more stables, unless I'm blind, which is possible. These two knights are dead. These four knights are there. Let's see, is Wham... Wham is going to go Castle Age in a moment here, so I don't think Puppy's Castle Age is going to matter that much, at least in the aspect of being ahead in tech. We see a little bit of raiding here. Let's check the villager difference. We haven't checked that in a while. 65 for Wham, 51 for Puppy. So that's a pretty decent lead for Wham here. I mean... Jeremy, to be fair, one keep is not going to deny the gold in the center. You have to place at least probably three or four to deny it all. But all right, so Wham, they're both Castle Age. Let's see, what did Wham go up with? He went in with the Abbey of Trinity, so he's probably going to grab the relics here shortly. Yep, we got a warrior monk on the way. For Puppy Paw, we have a... Nope, that is not Puppy Paw. Let's see, do we have anything being built from Puppy? I don't think so. He is making knights, which I mean isn't too surprising because camel riders still suck, let's be honest. No one wants to go camel riders. Even though they do beat knights, but there is going to be other units from Puppy or Wham. Let's see what Wham's going to go for here. He has not started either upgrade. He's still spamming out knights himself. Looks like he's going to tower the center. And Puppy still has plenty of food left here. He, is, he can just kind of get this food generation and chill for the most part. More stable. So Puppy is just going to go Knight. Is he going to add in crossbows? Yep, Knight, Crossbow, Archer. He's probably going to do a timing attack to try to go all in would be my assumption. He could go for a second TC. But if he does that, I do think that's going to be good for Wham. I think at this point, the only way Puppy can really come back is to either make two or three town centers... Or he needs to do a timing attack and try to bust Wham. Now he knows about the second TC. He's now officially scouted the second TC, but he has no idea how long this has been here for. And this has been here for quite a while for those of you tuning in. We see a bunch of archer ranges coming down. We have a bunch of knights. Archer's spear. We have a knight over here raiding. And let's see, did Puppy plop down a TC? He did. So Puppy's going to go for the TC route. I think if Puppy's going to go this route, he needs to get one more. I think he needs to go for three. I do not think he should stick on two if he uh, if he can help it. 
Looks like Wham is off of gold, or he's off of stone because of that knight, which is being very annoying. He could garrison in here, but it looks like he uh, <clears throat> forgot he has a tower there, or he just doesn't care. One of the two. These horsemen were taken care of. We see another raid coming this way, but I think, well, this first por portion of the wall is going to finish, but what about the second? Can Wham react in time? Can he do it? I don't think so. Nope. Puppy's going to get in here with four. We see another raid attempt here, which is denied by pretty much all of the army of Wham. These four villagers are dead, just absolutely slaughtered by the knights. No mercy. Okay, we see relics starting to be taken. We have one relic for Puppy, but he's and he's about to take the second. How many does Wham have? Wham's about to get his second, and Puppy could get the third. If he uses this, if he uses this right now, he can have three relics compared to two. Which I think is a little bit of a mistake. I do not think Puppy should have been able to secure these relics out here. I think a little bit of a mistake by Wham not to have a couple knights denying those relics. Because both Wham and Puppy are very good about grabbing relics. I mean, I think most top players are. But these two, I know from experience how good they are about it. I have some idle villagers here. And we do have a third town center coming out from Puppy. So he knows he needs to get his boom going. 76 villagers to 65. So the the vill lead is 13, but Puppy has a bigger army. And he's starting to make siege. At this point in the game, I'm starting to like Puppy's position a lot more. I think he's pretty much come back in this game. I don't think like I don't think Wham can kill him at this point. I think Wham's goal right now is probably to try to get to Imperial himself. And just boom. Attacking is gonna be hard because now uh, you know with siege. Am I only casting today? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to play or not today. Uh, this this series might go on for a while, so there's a good chance I will not be playing myself today. Alright, let's take keep taking a look here. We have more stone being gathered. Do we think Puppy's going to throw down a fourth TC? I don't think so. Any thoughts on the pup? Well, I can't wait for the patch notes tomorrow for that. I will definitely be going over that tomorrow. I'm very excited to actually find out what those are. Alright, so we've got... Ooh! 485 bounty for a Wham, by the way. Very close to 500, but I don't think he's going to get there, unfortunately. Unless he somehow finds three sheep or a random wolf. And we have the Springle Tower in the center, which I think is probably one of the best ways to secure this gold, the center gold, is to spam these wooden fortresses. I'm actually a little surprised that Wham didn't... Oh, he did place one here. I'm surprised he didn't try placing one here, but then again, he did lose map control for a while. And yes, we do have him in the center of the map. We have two right now in the center of the map. We see Sacred Sites being taken by both players. Wham's about to have two sacred sites and two relics. Puppy's going to have three. Ooh. Ooh. Puppy did not get that relic down here, by the way, actually. Wham got it. <laughs> no worries. We see both players going for an outpost now. <clears throat> so Puppy at this point has this secured. He wants to keep these secured. This is going to be denied. Let's look at the villager count now. We have 86 for Wham, 84 for Puppy. Puppy is officially caught back up now in the villager count with this 3TC boom. Uh, the villager kills have definitely helped out Puppy a lot. And Wham's been kind of been being pretty passive at this point in the game. I think he's saving. He's about to go Imperial, it looks like. Puppy Paw is, I wouldn't say, I mean, he could save for Imperial if he wanted to. But neither player wants to push. Uh Obviously, Wham has walled this side out so that Puppy can't just push. <clears throat> and they're both kind of just securing their sides of the map. We have 88 villagers, 81 military for Puppy. 65 for Wham. So right now, Puppy's army is actually bigger. He has, tw he has almost 20 more military. And he does have a Mangonel. Which, by the way, for those unaware, has gotten a buff lately. It is a pretty strong unit. Well, I mean, one isn't as scary, but maybe had two or three. Uh, this is Gold Valley. Now we have a defensive keep. This is a 
br this is perfect because Wham is going Imperial. He needs time to get Imperial stuff. You know, Streltsy, Siege. He wants to get all that stuff once he hits Imperial. Puppy is not going to be able to push very far. One Trebuchet is not going to take out this keep anytime soon. Uh, I wish they going to make it a comment there, but I'm going to keep that to myself because we are not, <laughs> we are commentating. <laughs> All right, we do see this wood line starting to get a little weak. This wood line as well. There's some small wood lines here, but let's actually take a look here. Puppy's going to end up taking this somewhat soon. And we do see a trebuchet going to town on this wooden fortress. And my nose is like, sorry guys. Alright, we have more of these. We have the Springolds coming out, which are going to have more range than Puppies. Let's see Puppy. Is he going Imperial yet? Alright, Puppy has just now started his Imperial Age. He's about a minute and 45 seconds behind. And he's not going to have the cheaper ones like uh, Wham does. And the extra upgrades. So Wham's going to have 0.5 extra. Wait, did someone say Trade Wing? Oh, nice catch. I didn't notice that. That is... We have Trade Wing coming out for Puppy, so he's planning on doing a trade route. That is not a bad call, because he can just go from here, you know, make a... Uh, might have to chop these trees, I'm not sure. Can make a, a market here and go to here, but Wham will be aware. He does have knights in the corner. Oh, ooh. 40 minute of gold hunting cabin here, by the way. You know, that's not as much as I thought. Is Puppy expecting to lose the middle? Uh, he's prop. Well, he is a, an age behind, so yes. I don't know if trading is actually going to do anything this game, because even though he does have a clear line, it is pretty scary for him because of... It's still open, right? These four knights can deny the whole trade. If Pup, if Wham sees it, he can just wall this side of the map, preventing it out. Thank you for the subscription, by the way, Dubert, Dubert Sen. Sorry for saying your name wrong, but I appreciate the support. All right, here we have our first knight. So we have Imperial, we have Elite Upgrades, we have Streltsy, we have Elite Knights. And uh, it forces him back. He's got to wait for these Springolds here because we have a uh, Mangonel. Mangonels are scary. There's a lot of crossbows here, so I think those knights aren't going to do much. Ooh, that, that trebuchet shot, or that Mangonel shot, that did a lot of damage. Okay, it's dead. Forward keep here. This is going to be to deny the... Yep. This right here, this keep, denies all the gold right here for, for Puppy. And now he's forced back. He just got Imperial Age. Unfortunately for Puppy, his this couldn't have come up sooner. He could have actually made that sooner in this area as a defense, and that would have forced Wham back, and he would not have been able to push this over. Losing this gold, I think, is going to turn the favor into Whams. I think any chance... Oh, yeah. And the supply tells the tale as well. Any chance of Puppy coming back are gone, is gone. Uh, he's now officially dead. More dead than this archer on the ground. We have Horseman coming out. We have a keep up, but this keep at this point is too late. He wanted this keep here. We have three Springles, which are going to deny any sort of, you know, Mangonels. And this timing attack by uh, Wham was absolutely perfect. I think it hit at the perfect timing. It hit while Puppy was still advanced to the Imperial Age. And so Puppy himself could not really benefit from Imperial Age, unlike Wham. Although, hold on a moment. Hold on. We, we see this being pushed back a little bit. Uh-oh. Is Wham out of it? I mean, he's still 40, 40 military, you know, 40 pop ahead, and they're even in villager count. I'll let you chat be the decision, the deciders on that hype. We can have some huge copium, maybe. But then again, let us not underestimate Puppy Paw. He, th I thought he was dead in the feudal age. We thought he was dead, and guess what? He's not dead. He's alive and well, still in this game. He, can, he still does have a gold mine, so this game isn't technically over. He's not out of gold. He can just use this. <laughs> Fatal L. <laughs> now, I, now, don't get me wrong. I favor Wham's position here, but I actually think Puppy might be able to hold this. He does have a Culver now. 
I don't know if he's gonna have a second one out. There are two bombards. Only one springold. Let's actually nope. Okay, we have three springolds for Wham, which I think are half a tile below uh, Colvin. But Puppy is struggling a little bit. He is. Uh, uh, he actually has 106 villagers. I I take that back. Looks like this gold mine was denied. He's just now starting this one. So what Puppy has to do here is he not only so he has to mine this gold. He is on a timer, right? If he loses it once this gold mine is ran out. He has no more gold left to go. So he needs to break this position to secure this. Great job casting. Thanks for creating this best of seven. Hey, thank you for the kind comment. I don't know how good my casting is to everyone else, but I do appreciate it. We do see Wham taking a, or making a keep here. He is also taking the sacred site, which is um, very good because this will allow him to start the sacred site timer. As we know, he has control of the center. This one. And with, oh, no, the keep was denied. Miss, we missed the horseman. Although, I feel like that was almost done, wasn't it? I think a little overreaction by Wham, but maybe he just panicked. Not sure. Looks like Puppy, though, is going to try to get his keep down here. And Wham's making his. This isn't going to go up. We have three knights here. We do have the push coming in again. We have one Culverin. Let's look at the supplies here. 34 military to 65 so wham is still in a better position i think no one would uh deny that uh the score is 1-0 puppy paw oh looks like uh the lovely bug i think the hill right here was forcing that forward which unfortunately means the loss of that we did get rid of a bombard though unfortunately he loses the keep although puppy does have 22 hand cannoneers to Wham's 14 Streltsy. But again, we have a Mangonel. And as, as we thought, this was a denied keep. Wham has taken the hunt here and denied another gold mine for uh, Puppy. And another keep by Wham coming up here. <clears throat> Puppy might actually, I think Puppy can hold this part here. There's really not much here. And I don't think this keep is going to go up. And actually, without this keep, Puppy could take this gold mine, though he does have to worry about these, and he does have to take care of this tower. Okay, this gold mine was denied, as we predicted. Down to 106 villagers, but I think that's fine. I don't think um, that's a problem right now. We have 22 hand cannoneers. Let's look at Wham's perspective. We haven't looked at his in a while. He's got 117 villagers. He's got six Streltsy in the making, along with a warrior monk, because again, he wants to take this sacred site, force the sacred site victory. He is also raiding right now with knights. And Puppy is, is pushing back the center, though. He's kind of pushing to back Wham's army. Wham kind of needs to, I think, chill out a little bit and, and maybe and get more Streltsy and stuff out. He did lose his army here, it looks like. But this keep is really raining fire down. Puppy's losing a bunch of hand cannoneers. He does have horsemen out. There are raids here. Oh. How many of those are idle? Okay. Puppy's down. It still has 112 villagers, so these did not kill these villagers. We have four knights, though, still in the raiding. Sacred site. Well, was going to be taken, but no more. And a Culverin is going to take down this keep very, very slowly. Although there is no burning oil, boiling oil. So without boiling oil, he actually uh, is not going to be able to burn the army away. But again, you need more than a Culverin for a keep. But if we look at the supplies here, Puppy Paw has done the impossible again. He evened it out. We're at 25 military, 39 for Puppy Paw. And oh. We, oh, I thought maybe we had a bombard. I got I got a little excited there. We have two culverins. This gold is losing some villagers. We still have some raiding here. Let's see. Did puppy lose. Eh, puppy's still at the same villager count, though. So he didn't really lose any, which is good for him. He's got a very healthy... Wham's actually starting to bank some food and gold. So I'm pretty sure he's going to start spamming out a lot more Streltsy here soon. Or knights, whichever he decides to do. 
Let's look at Puppy again here. He is off of gold again. Puppy did mine out this gold mine. He is down to 92 villagers, so it looks like raids are starting to do some damage. 89 villagers. He's lost 20 villagers at this point. Where's he losing all his villagers? Oh, Woodline. Oh! The Woodvilles. Oh, no! 78 villagers now. That's brutal. That hurts a lot. That pretty much took out the rest of his economy. And this keep comes up. Wham still has 120 villagers. He doesn't care. He can lose 5 to 10 villagers. And he can get those back really quickly. We're, we're about to have the Sacred Site victory here. Why no trade? Uh, at this point in the game, he honestly can't afford to go trade. He's been under pressure this entire time. And with the pressure, he hasn't been able to do it. And that's GG. Uh, and he didn't have secure of it. Uh, what's the word? He couldn't secure his trade route either. The reason being because of this tower. And he would be seeing that as a short way. Thank you, Titan of Industry, for the five gifted subscriptions. I do appreciate the support. Glad you're enjoying the stream. And if we and the if we look at the economy tab, okay, if we watched how this game played out, this is actually pretty impressive. Only a 2000 food difference for Wham. Puppy had more wood, which didn't play a factor, and 5000 more gold, which is a good amount of gold, don't get me wrong, but considering what Wham did, that's actually Puppy did very well. Oh, I mean, he made that a game. Puppy could have lost that thought. We all thought Puppy was dead in the feudal age. But Puppy said no and made it a game. I'd say a very... That was actually a pretty good, damn good game, if I may say so myself. All right, let me add the 1-1. One, one. The score is 1-1 one, one between Puppy and Wham. Um, And someone linked me something, but I... Oh, there it is. Uh, If we look at the villager count tab here also... Uh, you know, this is where it's actually... Puppy played that really well. There was a big villager gap here. He went three TCs, which, by the way, I just want to say I said that Puppy either needed to do an all-in or go three TCs, and he ended up catching back up in the villager count. Uh, thank you, King Grand. I, I appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying the cast. I don't know how I'm doing, but uh, I'm doing the best I can. Uh, I guess the only other thing is military count, which we can see kind of fluctuated a lot here. I mean, look at this right here. This is when people called GG for Puppy again, but he was able to hold on and then obviously eventually died. Okay, let me add the... Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Okay, we are going to go into Game 3 in just a moment here. So for those of you who are, who are looking forward to Game 3, don't tune away yet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vipey. I do appreciate it. Let me see. How do I... How do I add this correctly? Because I don't want to. I don't want to delay too much time. But how do I add this correctly? Can I download these these images somehow? Sniper, I'm stupid. How would I? How would I best get this on? Are they all custom maps? No, unfortunately not. Uh, I only did the first two maps because. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm in there. We're just getting a, a more professional overlay, by the way, everyone. And again, thank you everyone for the subs and following and and obviously tuning in. Add browser link, paste link, okay. Okay, so we the chat might go a little bit different here in just a second. Add a new one. Set size to 1920 by 1280. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he's Chad. Oh, it's colorless too. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, how do I change the... Oh, you're going to... Are you updating that part? Are you updating the score so I don't have to worry about that? Okay, so let me get rid of mine. We don't need my crappy one anymore, I don't think. Remove. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, I think that does it. I forgot to set the size. I thought I did set it. 1920 by... 
by 10, oh, 1080, 1080, I did it wrong, there we go, all right, we're going to go into game three, uh, predicting games, so not series, it's always going to be a game, all right, so we're into a tied series, where, where is game three going to be, uh, we don't know yet, all right, thank you, sniper, you're a boss as always, appreciate you, All right, so we got high view. Uh, let me make sure that you guys can't see the score or time. Perfect. Thank you again, Sniper. Appreciate it. All right, so we have Roos versus French on high view. Now, in my opinion, this is a pretty difficult matchup for French. I think French can... Or, well, let me... Let me rephrase that. I did not mean to say that. I meant to say I think it's difficult for Roos until the game gets later and later. Uh, obviously, I think the later the game goes, the better it goes for Roos, just because their late game skill is better than French. Cheaper Siege, better late game composition, you know, Streltsy. But the Feudal Age definitely is going to be French favorite, so I'll be very curious how they play this out. Because personally, so the way I've been messing around with this matchup as Roos is I like to go fast castle into horse archers. I know, it's a very, you know, you know, the <clears throat> the build that kind of came back a little bit. But, uh, against French specifically, I should say. But I know Wham likes to do two TC play, so I think there's a very good chance he's going to go to second town center and not fast castle. As for Puppy, I actually don't know how Puppy plays French. Um, but we do know that Puppy's getting a ton of sheep and stuff. Let's actually stay in... Oh, yeah. Whoa, yeah. Puppy's Roos. I gotta remember that. You raiding or catching reinforcement? Uh, defend and raiding, depending on how the game's going. And then I go Knight Horse Archer. Knight Horse Archer is a very strong composition. And I do think if this gets to the castle, that Puppy will go... Um, will go Horse Archer Knight. I think that's kind of the composition you want to go for in the Castle Age. Five sheep, 155 bounty. He's about to be at 270 and 280 bounty here. Is the map Roos favored? Uh, yeah, this is a very this is probably Roos's best map. I, I would say. You just get such a good bounty. And also, I, I said the names incorrectly. That was denied, by the way. Wham denied. Wham is the French player. Puppy is the Roos player. Apologies for that little uh, misunderstanding or incorrection there. He's got to run that night around. We're going to stay in Puppy's perspective just to see how high this bounty gets. I'm going to bet he's going to get to 320 or so. I mean, he's got all these wolves. He's got a pack of deer left. Already took out that deer pack. <clears throat> and we'll see where he goes from there. Okay, I was going to say that's a mistake. Uh, if I said 320, I definitely meant to say, like, possibly 400 here. I did an incorrect... This is why you don't do math on stream, by the way. You just look stupid. When will I learn my lesson? I don't know. Alright. So we have the School Cavalry. Very standard play. No wheelbarrow yet. Interestingly, and... Okay, interesting. So... <clears throat> so, wham... I gotta remember it's Wham, is going over here. He made three villagers for this mill, but he hasn't gotten Wheelbarrow yet, which is... I thought that's what he was going to rush it for, but he's still not getting it. Not sure of a mistake or something else. We'll keep an eye on it, though. See a little bit of harass there. And Puppy has hit 400. Now, if Puppy kills both boars, he's going to be at a 500 and... I'm not going to do the math on stream, but it's like 555 bounty, I think. Which is sick it's very hard to get 500 bounties so i think that is going to be puppy's goal see a bit of harass here which is what you should always do as bruce something i should do more often why did i add myself there because why not i'm sure i'm casting i can say what i want for the most part okay well, there we have wheelbarrow very late do you think that could have gone earlier but either way we have it Looks like uh, Puppy lost a scout to the town center. 
I gotta say, Wham got a little lucky in the spawn that this town center seems to cover his villagers. Which is very rare. I kind of wish it was more common. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Alright, so... Okay. Puppy is not going for a boar, which I can understand why. Going for a boar can be kind of risky. Because um, while he could get the boar, there's a chance that... Uh, well, this knight's already actually pretty much out because Wham rushed that feudal age. I didn't even see what time he got there. Didn't pay attention. Naughty me. I'm a bad caster. What can I say? I'm used to just chilling out and watching the streams and cast. So this is kind of this is interesting. On my perspective. Okay. So we're going for the deer again. This actually used to be how this build worked when this build first came into effect. The Iaga's build, as they called it, because I think he's the one that pioneered this is you would go for the deer here and then you would be aggressive now i don't think that build is very good against french i do think you either want to go fast castle or 2tc judging that puppy is not buying stone i think he's going to go fast castle which is how i personally prefer to play this matchup myself just use an australian accent works for anyone here who has one. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, never mind. But, pu ooh, Wham, on the other hand, looks like he might be going for a second TC. Looks like his goal is to get a couple knights out, maybe to deny the boars. And then, and obviously do some light raid, and then he's going to go for a second TC, it looks like. Does So he's not planning on putting any pressure to Puppy at this point. He's not planning on trying to kill Puppy with a timing. He's just going to raid. I do not think he'll get that villager. He'll be forced to run away. And no chivalry yet. And yeah, okay, so we have two PTC coming out of Wham, and Puppy is getting Arrow Slits, which I actually think is very worth it. If you're being knight raided by French as Roos, and you're get, you're in a faraway hunt, or a boar, whichever you go for, I do think you should invest in the 100 stone to get that Arrow Slits. Let's look at Puppy's perspective here. He got Arrow Slits on both his towers, which again, I agree with. see some harassment here but not really doing anything at this point in time we see chivalry coming in and a second tc is going to be coming in shortly for wham as for puppy let's see he's actually okay puppy is okay he's counting some villagers i was gonna say was he going fast castle or not but he is okay so he's 100 percent going fast castle <clears throat> Ooh, where are these? Ooh, is he going to take the... Oh, he's going to place his town center here to take the hunts. Makes complete sense. Hi, Blade. Is this a mini tournament? Uh, Yeah, this is a show match between Wham and Puppy. Best of seven. And this is game three. The score is tied one to one right now, favoring Wham and Puppy because it's tied. Oh, looks like Puppy... Nope, not going to lose it. And Puppy's going to be aging here in just a moment. And he is going to be going for the Fast Castle har uh, Horse Archers. You hate that you cannot upgrade further after getting Arrow Slits? Fun fact! Bruce actually can get the Springled Emplacement even though they get Arrow Slits. So they can get Arrow Slits and Springled. And they get the extra range with the Springled Emplacement. But only Bruce can do it that I'm aware of. Some people think it's a bug, but judging that it's never been addressed, I do not think it is a bug. Okay, so we're going to see Fast Castle Horse Archers from Puppy, 2TC from Wham. Looks like Wham might go heavy on the Knights, judging that he has two stable, I mean, well, his landmark and his stable. <clears throat> He's going heavy on food, only four on gold. I'll actually be very curious how this is going to play out here, because... It, this is a very debated topic, or no, I, let me refer, that's not debated, no one talks about it really. But I remember playing versus Divine once, and he, he thought that his 2TC build should beat a Fast Castle Roos. And he did beat me once when I did that, and then I beat him once doing that, but that was a long time ago at this point. So I don't know how that's held as his build has gotten more refined. I'd be very curious. I personally like the way that Puppy's playing this, so I think Fast Castle, Horse Archers, get the relics... Um, but the other thing is, though, is we see Wham doing something smart. 
He recognized that his opponent is going fast castle and he's placing towers with arrow slits all around the map. These towers are gonna do two things. This tower is gonna deny hunts and berries. And I don't think it can deny this relic. I think it's too far away. Like it might do some damage, but the hor the uh, the warrior monk will be able to grab this relic. But this should deny this relic. This tower is going to deny this relic. And uh, so actually at this point, I do like Wham's position. I think he's playing this uh, really good when recognizing the fast castle from his opponent. Got some Wham fanboys in the chat. Where's our puppy fanboys? We got to have one of each. Good of Puppy to see this, by the way. He's now denying this tower, um, which is good, because obviously this tower actually would cause a real headache later on. We see raids. Doesn't look like look like one villager might go down, but saved most of them. Let's look at the villager count here. 32 for Puppy, 45 for Wham. Oh, I don't think he's going to get this, unfortunately. Yeah, that, if he had done that a second earlier, actually, that could have been closer than it looked. But unfortunately, not going to get that. Although in the future, he can snag this relic now. This tower will not fire on him. Um, we still do not see... One, two, three, four... Does he, he doesn't have a relic yet. At this point in time, this is actually kind of going poorly for a puppy, I would say. He does not have access to a relic yet. Wham is playing this absolutely beautifully with the 2TC play. Uh, these horse archers aren't going to do much here. They did get a villager, but he's taking a lot of damage and has to run. And these outposts are just everywhere. And again, this that is the downside of the fast castle play. And and pup or Wham, I'm actually going to steal this from Wham. I didn't ever thought about it because I'm a baddie. But this is actually really smart of him to be placing these towers when he had map control. I actually really like how he's playing this. Oh yeah, he's got to run. Oh, that would have been that would have been really good for Puppy. All right, so we're now getting our first relic at 11 minutes and 50 seconds into the game. Uh, almost 12 minutes because that's a slow moving monk. That actually hurts, judging by the you know for this for the fast castle, you want to have relics really quick, and they have been denied very handily. All right, we still see horse archers coming into play. Let's look at Wham's perspective here. It does look like he might be saving for Castle Age soon. He actually is still gathering stone, which makes sense for the arrow emplacements. We see further raids. Ooh, this is a big raid. Uh, one relic was taken already. That's why you only see four relics on the map. Fifth one's up here. Other three are here. Wham's at almost 60 villagers to 33 of Puppy Paw. I think that uh, this is not looking good for Puppy Paw, but people have underestimated Puppy Paw enough in this series already. Last game, they said he was dead multiple times. He he almost brought it back in a way, you know. Puppy, bringing the heart to the people. Because that makes sense. I will say, I'm surprised Puppy never... Tr well, I guess he never had the chance till now, but both boars are open. A little surprised that neither players killed them <clears throat> at this point. Because it would give Puppy a 500 bounty if he did so. We're at 35 villagers for Puppy, 64 for Wham, and Wham is now in the Castle Age with the Royal Institute. So Wham wants to kill Puppy in the Castle Age. His goal, which is a good goal, by the way, his goal is to kill Puppy. He's not, he does not want to get to the Imperial Age. And these knights have just done a tremendous amount of damage. Look at that. Look at that cheeky bugger over here. He's stealing the food, has an outpost. Just hurting Wham, uh, Puppy in every way possible. Puppy needs some huge raids to get it back in this game, I think. He needs to do something. Oh, and now we have a boar being taken by Wham. Uh, yeah. We did see a couple villager kills here. Wham's like, villagers? Man, I, I print those out. I make a villager every 16 seconds. 
And I have two TCs. Puppies only on 37 villagers, 25 military to whams, 11 military and 70 villagers. And as we can see, Puppy's trying to get this relic, but Wham's not going to let him. Wham is not going to let him get that relic. More villager kills. Though. I mean, this is what Puppy needs, right? He needs to be doing these raids. He needs to be keeping this military low. One thing I will say that even though French has a bigger uh, villager lead, you do have to realize he does not have the military lead yet. So Puppy can still do some damage um, and, you know, potentially do some something to... Potentially bring himself back. Unfortunately, without five relics, though, it does hurt. If he had five relics right now, I would say Puppy's not in as bad of a spot, obviously, because five relics. But with only two and down a TC, although he's about to have a second TC finished, I would say... Let's look at Puppy's resources here. Yeah, and this is the other thing that sucks. He is He's having to switch to farms already. Farm transitions are great, but we can see the deer here, or the berries here... Deny these deer. Deny these berries. You don't want to be denied your own deer. You want to get those. More night raids about to come in here. Puppy's probably going to lose a few villagers. Let's see how many. Down to 39. 38. Alright. Down to 39 villagers again. And Wham's at 74. Oh, we are going to see a little raid here. Oh, doesn't look like it's going to do much though. Wham reacted perfectly. He said, you're not killing my villagers here. We also got a raid up here. Well, potential raid. Might be able to get a few villagers. Wham's trying to push him down. We see a dive, but again, Wham reacting almost instantly. Just not losing many villagers. And he's going to kill these horse archers. This is a... Uh... Oh, and another TC. So Wham... Our puppy's kind of doing what he did last game. He knows he's behind. And his best chance is to greet it out, or he has to go for an all-in timing. He's opted to greet it out to get three TCs, which is a hefty investment. And he's getting rated more. Real winner is Blade. Great casting. Hey, thank you. I do appreciate it. As I've reiterated, I'm definitely not a caster. So I... Uh, uh, yeah, so I appreciate it. Uh, so we see Royal Bloodlines coming in. This is going to give the Cavalry for the French plus 35% HP. Um, that is going to be obviously a huge boost. You know, that's going to go from 230 to I can't do math, so I don't know. But it's going to be a lot of health. Let's just say that. More, more horse archers getting cornered and killed here. 310. So 310 HP in the Castle Age. <laughs> Captain. <laughs> well, we're about to find out for sure. He got two villagers with a Willaloo here. Sorry for missing that. Unfortunately, if he got all these villagers, that would have been very helpful. But now someone in chat commented that they think that Puppy didn't see this landmark. And I don't think he has. Let's make sure. Well, we can't tell because I forgot. Observer doesn't really show that. But even if Puppy saw this, he has to take the gamble. He has to take a gamble in this game. No matter which way he goes, he either had to go for try to go for a gamble one TC all in, or he had to gamble with multiple TCs to try to boom his way back into the game. He has to do something. He can't just play two TC standard and try to come back. It's not going to work out. Not with how behind he is, because he's at 56 villagers. Wham's at 85. That's a 30 villager lead. 32 villagers if we want to be precise. Uh, okay, good reaction by Puppy here. Unfortunately, this tower got denied. Otherwise, he could have denied this gold. So I just want to reiterate something smart that uh, Wham is doing. And you actually will see BCQD do this as well. You'll notice he's taken this, this exposed gold and not his safe golds. The reason being is he has map control and he knows it, so he's trying to take as much of this gold as possible so that on the off chance that Puppy does bring this back and starts regaining map control, this gold mine will have been his for a while. Um, so it'll, he won't get as much gold from here. He could also theoretically do it for here, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's just going to try to kill him. Looks like we're going to have a keep drop along with Royal Knights, which are 310 HP. Nyan Racing Cat called it. I don't think there's any way that Puppy's going to hold this attack. That's 28 knights, and that is GG right there, folks. That is 2-1 to Wham. 
I would say that was a pretty one-sided match. I like the build by Puppy, but I think Wham played it perfectly by placing those towers to deny the relics. And, I mean, those towers are MVPs in this game. They denied the relics, gave him full vision and map control. <clears throat> I think it was very, very good. Are there any more custom maps to be used? If it goes to game seven, Mirror Random will be used. Unfortunately, <clears throat> I probably should have used more, but oh well. I didn't think about it. All right, as we can see here, almost double the food count for Wham. 4,000 more gold, almost 4,600 more gold for Wham. I mean, Wham just kind of out equaled him everywhere except for Wood. It was, I was really, really well played by Wham there. Uh, to be fair, like I said, I do think this matchup is pretty French favored unless it gets to late game. Uh, but I think either way, Wham played that really, really well. And I actually dislike how he played that because I would have been very tilted if I, I was puppy. That would have been a tilting game for me. All right, let's see here. Okay, perfect. Score is updated. Two to one favoring Wham, and we're going to be going into game four. Someone said game four is Mongols versus French on Dry Arabia. Should have gone 2TC to start. Yeah, I'm not sure I like 2TC to start, though, either, because that delays, you know, staying feudal age against French, I think, is very dangerous. <clears throat> All right. So, we have Wham in the corner here. He is playing as Mongols. And then on the other side, we have Puppy Paw playing as the French. Looks like he wants some French revenge. Yep, I'm clever. What can I say? I thought that was excellent in taste, and I don't care what chat says. All right, so we have standard stuff. The Ubu coming in. House. You know, nothing too, too uh, uncommon here. Relics. I would say slightly favor the Mongol player, but to be fair, Mongols moved his TC closer, so it makes sense. He's a tad bit closer uh, to the relics, to these two especially, these three, and actually four. I think this is closer to him as well. My guess if uh, how this game is going to play out is I think there's going to be a tower rush. Probably, to, you know, the, the goal of the tower rush, by the way, for those unaware as a Mongol player against French, isn't to kill the French player. It's to slow them down. You know, if you get a tower up here, you're denying precious gold, which is going to deny a castle age, upgrades, you know, whatever their plan is. It's going to also stop night production. It also gives Mongols time to go fast castle, which is almost always what Mongols does in almost every matchup in the game. They want to go that fast castle because their castle age allows them to get the faster relics, you know, Lancer harass, and, you know, just gives them that map control. <clears throat> still not as cringe as Drongo. Hey, but, you know, Drongo's still a fantastic caster. Let's not forget about that. And this this gold mine, let's let's if we look at this map size or this map spawn here, very front gold for for puppy, right? This is very good. Like as a Mongol player, he's gonna be super happy to see this. This this gold is beautiful for him. Can easily get a tower here. He might even just put a tower here because it denies this wood line and this gold. Though that's not gonna matter because this wood line right here is safely under Puppy Paw's control. And as predicted. Here goes the second, here goes the barracks. We have spearmen on the way. I assume a villager's gonna follow. There's the villager, and we're gonna have our, our tower rush that we all knew was coming. I don't think there's any time or any reason why a Mongol player will not tower rush a French player. Uh, it's just, it's stupid not to, because it, if you don't, you're just giving French free reign to do whatever they want. And this is gonna force an archery range. Um, and I'm gonna guess the way Puppy Paw's gonna handle it is make a bunch of scouts use the scouts to burn down the tower and then retain map control that way that's how i'm guessing it's going to turn out and as we can see puppy Paw has scouted the villager i'm sure he's not surprised by this in the slightest you're <laughs> tower rushing your own flesh and blood <laughs> i like it we see more spearmen coming out i think the, the golden number uh in my experience well watching i don't really tower rush much is you want to make about four spearmen. I don't think you want to make much more, at least not against French. Because there's no real way for French to stop this. 
So we're gonna get an out an outpost up here. And all Puppy has to do is just wait till feudal age. This tower is gonna go up, there is no denying it. No matter how much Puppy wishes he could stop it in his tracks. And if we look at Wham, obviously he is going to be a later to his advance because of the tower, but it's not going to matter because that's what the tower is for, to delay the French and buy you time to do what you want to do. Wham not likely to deny more than gold. Yeah, that's true, but I mean, you got to give a decent spawn at least. At least he has a wood. And he actually got a decent amount of sheep, I think, too. He has six sheep. Five now. Puppy got four, so there's still some sheep on the map, too. But if you also look, yeah, the next goal that Wham can, or Puppy Paw can take is this one, which he is going to take. We see that Puppy is he is not deterred. He said, you're going to tower rush me? I'm out of here. And he went straight for this goal. We'll see if Wham scouts it out or not. Um, if Wham scouts it, he can easily deny this gold mine as well. I'm sure he's going to be suspecting that something like this might be happening. We can see that he is scouting to see if there's another gold mine over here. I'm pretty sure Wham doesn't know about the gold at this point. He actually... <laughs> poor Wham. He, has this, he hasn't scouted this area, which is right where the gold is, but he's scouted all around it. But he's looking, because he knows. What's the player going to do? Sneak another gold mine. Very common. And as... <clears throat> I just want to say... Not tooting my own horn or anything, but I did predict this. He's going to go mass scouts, make some archers, and he's going to burn down the towers with his scouts. Uh, it's a pretty common response by French, just because it's better than investing 125 gold and 300 wood into a, uh, into a ram. And then we also do see a double. This this actually is a good idea. This is also a smart move because the reason why is now when he goes to burn it with the, these scouts, two towers are going to be firing on those scouts. So I actually, I actually do like this play. I think it's going to cause more damage to the scouts. Um, but what, whether that's the correct decision or not, I don't know. How many scouts do you need to burn down one tower with arrow slits? You you want at least seven scouts, I think. I think that's what I normally go for. But he does have this. Let's see, has Wham scouted this out yet? Okay, Wham has scouted this, I'm pretty sure. Because uh, if we look, it's not in Fog of War anymore. So he does know that Puppy is on that gold. Or at least I think he does. He might not, because he's not reacting to it. Oh, it looks like we might lose a scout or an archer here. Wham is still making scouts, still making a few more archers. It looks like he is going to go for the 2TC play. Which is actually pretty common nowadays. You're seeing a lot of French players, which I'm going to say, I think Divine should be credited for this. as He's kind of made the 2TC French play standard because he kind of showed that not only was it viable, but it's really, really strong. Um... So, this is, again, this has been pretty common at the high level for a while now. And we see... So Okay, so I, I'm changing my mind here. I'm guessing Puppy Paw must have, or Wham must have scouted this gold mine. But he doesn't know that Wham... Wait, no. Wham scouted the gold mine, but doesn't know that Puppy took it. Is my guess. But he's about to find out for sure. So, if he didn't know, we're seeing right now that he sees it. <clears throat> hey, figure, this is a normal random map rush, or, you know, standard settings. So not a no-rush setting. We do see a tower here, which, good reaction by Puppy Paw here. He does want to secure this tower to get that gold. These towers are being annoying. Where did those scouts go? He did lose a villager. But we have... We have six scouts, which is almost enough to burn these down. But this is the smart part about having these two. Instead of trying to burn this down uh, with seven, he has to kind of wait for a few more scouts because of the second tower, which both have arrow slits. And if we look at Wham's perspective here, he is probably going to be... He's going to be going for castle. He did make some horsemen to try to deny this gold. What's the series at now? It is 2-1 favoring Wham. Oh, we do see a... Uh, a boar kill here. Looks like he wants to take that boar. 
I'm not sure if I like that, but uh, I mean, I don't know why I don't like it, but it's a fine play, I guess. But it doesn't looks like he's just going to put these on gold and a couple to take that boar. Which, by the way, Wham has scouted. We see the second TC going down on the hunts. Wham aggroed the boar. Oh, I knew that, guys. Professional caster here. Very clever play by Wham to do that. I completely saw that. Uh, and that's why I'm the professional caster and you guys... Nah. Just kidding. Alright, so now that we have the two town center plays down, we have... Seven scouts running around. They're all a little bit hurt. Some from the boar, some from those horsemen. We have a knight coming out. So it looks like Puppy, or yeah, Puppy's changed his mind. He's not going to try to burn these down right now. I wonder if the second tower made him change his mind on doing that. It wouldn't surprise me if it did, because you do need more scouts to take that out. Wham is saving for Castle Age here, which is, again, this is very standard Mongol play. We expected it. The towers are meant to buy time and then get him Castle. We see a little raid here. Ooh, he's losing these archers, though. Puppy needs to be saving these archers with that knight. Did not lose these, though. And, uh, yeah, so we see that going along. This casting series is going to go viral on YouTube. <laughs> you know it. I am going to upload this to YouTube, though. Alright, and Wham is now officially going to be going Castle Age. And he did actually take these hunts. Uh, and he only has one pasture. So that's why he's going for hunts. Makes sense to me. Puppy Paw, on the other hand. Thank you, Blue Suns, for the Tier 1 subscription. I appreciate the support. Glad you're enjoying the stream to support me here. Alright. We see another knight coming in. We see 41 villagers for Puppy, 34 for Wham. That's about what we'd expect. Ooh, look at this cheeky little tower here. With Arrow Slith, that is going to deny this gold mine, and that is going to force Puppy off of gold. But he does have one here, so he's not completely screwed yet. He actually scouted the tower, and he's already retreating. He's going to go take the boar, it looks like, and just transfer some of his food villagers to this gold mine. That does hurt, though. Very smart play from Wham. Uh, that's the point of these towers, like I've always said. You want to be placing these everywhere as Mongols. It gives you not only vision, but it's just great for map control. And Wham has hit the Castle Age. He's building two outposts here to defend his villagers from a harass. And he's going to be making Lancers himself. Oh, and the movement speed, that's right. Yes, these also provide a movement speed for Mongols, uh, which I forget the name of it. The Yam Network. Okay, we see a little attempted at harass here, but good reaction by Wham, who's not going to lose a single villager. He's like, ha, I'm just going to run these away. You're not going to kill anything. Wham Network. <laughs> All right, so we see one double, double producing of Lancers, and then one set of Knights. So we're going to have three Lancers here. Took a puppy paw's perspective. He's still not going castle. He is adding another stable to add in more knights. He does have this boar that he's gathering from. And let's see what else is going on here. And he has two knights and scouts. He is going to have to retreat from this. These lancers will absolutely destroy these knights. Spearmen, of course, will help as well. And so he's going to be forced to retreat. He is going to lose these archers, and he recognized that and just tried to do as much damage as he could. He's going to have to retreat these villagers. And again, we have more Night Harass. Uh, again, but good reaction by Wham. He's not going to lose anything. Man, we just have alerts going everywhere. I'm just trying to keep track. Damn Mongol Towers. What can I say? They always distract you, let me tell you. All right, so we see some Knights here. I actually think... Yeah, I think Puppy needs to just focus on these spearmen, and I think he can take these out. We do see a raid here, but it looks like the villagers were retreated already. Man, you gotta credit Wham for his reaction timing. He is reacting really quickly. He's at 42 villagers to 58, though. There's a wolf killing a villager here. We got Harass here. Okay. Right, and I 
And again, I think we're going to lose a villager here to that wolf. We see Lancer's kind of doing their thing. That's the thing. So even though he's, even though Puppy Paw does have French Knights, they are not as strong as Lancers. Lancers have 230 health and 36 damage output compared to 190 and 30 damage. And the reason they have 30 is because of the blacksmith. And we lost a villager there. The wolf is dead as well. And yes, Wham does know about the 2TC. And Wham has just not retaken this. This he just hasn't wanted to. 62 villagers to 45. So Wham, Puppy's still great villager-wise. Still not on his way to castle though. That's that's painful. But he can't really. He is making an outpost finally to take care, or not an outpost, a ram to take care of the outposts. And we do see, I will say, is this his first relic? Yeah, okay. I'm a little surprised he didn't make two monks at the same time. Let me make sure that there's not two monks on the field on Wham's side. He does have two monks. Where's the second one? Grab that relic. Well, oh, oh, well, he grabbed another relic somewhere. Oh, here we go. All right, so we're not even just gonna talk about that. So he's grabbing the relics. Which is going to help equalize the villager difference. I think five relics is it equal to equivalent to 12 villagers. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know for sure. But Puppy has been able to secure this gold mine. And he's now going to take care of these outposts to secure his front front gold. Looks like Puppy is going to be going castle like shortly here. He just needs to wait probably another 15 seconds and he'll have the food. I hear a wolf somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Oh, it's just here. Wham has added a second TC that I missed because uh, that's how I go, yo. I may be casting, but I'm going to miss stuff. But we have a second TC finished, which is going to help equalize things further. Obviously, Puppy's still 25 villager lead, which is about expected. Ooh, if Puppy doesn't react to this, he could lose this to these spearmen. <clears throat> but there's seven knights... I think this tower is going to go down regardless. Let's see if there's anything else. We have more outposts going out. Again, the best way to play. More knights coming, but like, like I said, these are doing more damage. So that's why these knights are not trading as cost effectively as you would think. And he lost the ram. Didn't even get to get rid of that second tower. That hurts. But Puppy is in the Castle Age, and he went with the Royal Institute as well. We have been seeing this a lot lately. We saw this in Red Bull like three times or something. People are definitely starting to prefer that Royal Institute over the Guild Hall, which I think is awesome that we're seeing multiple styles to the game rather than just always going to the same uh, landmark. We have Royal Bloodlines incoming already. Now, I mean, now this is a strong upgrade. It, 310 HP Knights in Castle Age? That's a lot of HP. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Puppy. You're getting raided, Puppy. Oh no, Puppy. Okay, Puppy reacts. Lost a knight there. Raiding here. He does have professional scouts, which I think he must have just gotten. Oh, more raids here. We're at 76 villagers to 57. That villager lead is slowly dropping here. Oh, these knights aren't doing anything here. Yeah, you know, Nyan, he may have got it 10 minutes ago, but I only just noticed it. Okay, we're going to have the Sacred Sight start being taken soon. We just see outposts being littered across the map. Wham is playing this beautifully, by the way. Like, this is how you want to play Mongols. Get these outposts out everywhere across the map. Deny the precious resources. He's out of gold here. Can't retake this gold mine because of this. We see 25 villagers here. More raids incoming. Another night lost. And there's also... Yeah, I... I think I mentioned the relics already. Alright, so let's see here. Ooh, might be able to get a raid here, maybe if he doesn't, if Wham doesn't notice. Wham's starting to add in the crossbows. Royal Bloodlines is complete. Still denied this gold mine. 81 villagers for Puppy. 
63 for Wham. Wham is slowly catching up. It was a 26 villager lead. Uh, I have no idea who created the, the fast cast for Mongols. But this is what... I mean, Puppy needs to start trying to do some raiding here, right? You can just see red everywhere, by the way. It's everywhere. Yeah, Wham out of the second TC a while ago. He's going to burn this down now. We have we have a spring on the placement tower here. Definitely don't want to take that fight there. Another forward outpost by Wham. More raids here. Yeah, we can show their vision difference here. So we can kind of see that Wham has all this vision right here compared to Puppy who only has vision of his own base. Let me tell you... Being in the French, being in any player's position in, in puppies right now, it sucks when you have when the other player has map control like this. It, it feels bad, man. Yeah, he has a market. So he's trying to burn this down before the spring the placement finishes. I do not think that's going to work. What is that firing on? Oh, the mill. <clears throat> Puppy has secured this gold line, which does give him these. And Puppy GG's. Puppy decides he knows he can't do much from this point, and he is out. That was very well, that was very clean by Wham. Very, very clean gameplay. We kind of see, even though we had the villager difference, I'm going to bet the economy tab. Puppy may have had more food, but look at that gold. Almost double the gold. Not quite, but almost double the gold. 1,400 more wood. And obviously, Wham's Mongols, who's going to always have more stone. For people who think that Wham might be, uh, you know, because he lost uh, over the weekends to Don Ari, who lost to Puppy Paw, who got revenge. If people thought Wham was, you know, maybe losing his touch, I think this series is showing he's still got it. Wham has been playing this <clears throat> these perfectly the past two games. <laughs> Nine race guy. Oh, I've never followed. Thank you everyone again for the subs and following. I do appreciate the support. Got a lot of you today, actually. I'm glad you guys are able to stand my casting, I guess. Alright, so they are in the lobby. Thank you, plot point. So they are in the lobby right now. Um, I might take a quick I think I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. I'm going to be right back in about 30 seconds. Give me a minute. All right, I am back. Thank you, Verizzi. Thank you for the tier one subscription. Appreciate the support. Looks like we are going into game five. This is match point. If Wham wins this match, he wins 4-1. If Puppy, on the other hand, you know, if he can take it back, we could be a 3-2 situation. But without further ado, let's step into the action. An HRE mirror. What map are they playing, I wonder? I don't even know. <clears throat> okay, we have an HRE mirror on Lipany. What do you think HRE need to be at a better spot? To be honest, I think HRE actually might be in a good spot right now. I don't think they're too weak anymore. It's hard to say without knowing for sure, but HRE is actually... that The Prelip buff actually was a pretty big one for them. Um... But I, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest, if let's pretend that HRE still sucks, 
Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not... I don't know what I would do to change HR any further at this point. <clears throat> but, anyway. That's a balanced discussion for another topic. For now, we're going to be enjoying this beautiful HR mirror. Now, okay. Earlier in the cast, I said I'm not going to be biased. I am going to be a little biased here. I kind of want Puppy to win because we want more games. I have a question. Against A3, what do you guys do to beat mass infantry spam? Crossbow. <clears throat> Just got to be careful with them. Don't want to. You want to make sure you have a good mass too. So looking at the spawn here, this relic favors Puppy. This relic favors Puppy. I think these three favor Wham. Hard to say though. It is a little close. I do think it, I do these two I, I would say favor Wham for sure. This one I think arguably favors Wham as well. But to be honest, if both players are going for the standard uh fat or Bruce Regnants Cathedral, then they both want to get uh, then as long as they as long as both players get two relics, the other player having an extra relic isn't the biggest deal. It still does make a difference, but it's not uh, it's not going to be a, oh man, you lose because of that. But if Wham is able to secure four relics, then that's very bad for pu uh, Puppy. Let's look at the spawns here. I would say Wham also has a better food spawn here. I mean, it's still kind of front. His second spawn deer is way over here. Same with Puppy. But Puppy's is right in the middle of the map pretty much. So if Puppy loses map control, he won't be able to use these hunts. I do suspect he might go professional scouts, though. I have been seeing that making a comeback as HRE, if players starting to go professional scouts. I think this is a good chapel placement, I think. I think the only complaint I have about it is the TC covers a good portion of it, but you know what? If you've ever seen my chapel placements, you know that I can't talk. Trumps in place, 60k bet on Wham. Oof. It's a very standard play so far. Let's look at his. I would say, ooh, that's a really nice Regnitz for uh, Wham. Gonna cover his deer. Though, it looks like Wham actually didn't get much of the deer. Wham, uh, oh, no, Puppy Paw has 14 deer. Wham has six. So Wham actually is hurting on the sheep department. Whereas Puppy got most of the sheep. So that's actually that's actually a big deal. That is a big deal, believe it or not. That is something that you don't want, especially as HRE. But it is an HRE mirror. So while it does hurt, it's not like he's playing against French where that really hurts. Ah, the, the patented Wham, and I think Puppy Pod does this too, deer push. Pushing the deer up here with that chapel. I've seen them both do this plenty of times on their streams. No, I don't I don't think I've really seen anyone else do this, but it's a very smart play because this is going to give them that is it 40% bonus? Yeah, for, they're going to gather this deer 40% faster. Hut was first I saw. Well, I can only go by what I've seen Snoopa. So, I'm going to say these two uh for now. But I wouldn't be surprised if I did it first. The Australians are very good with their unique stuff. I mean, this is... That is beautiful. Look at that. He got all of his deer. Not only did he get it under here, he got it under his mill. You do not see that for Puppy Ba here. He did not try to push his deer in. Um, this is actually a very big deal. That is literally the... That's amazing. I couldn't emphasize how... If I saw this as an H Reed mirror, I would be like, uh, that sucks for me. Because he's going to be able to get a faster castle time if he chooses to do so with those deer. And we see Puppy going for a stable. And I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, yep, there we go. Starting to gather that deer. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's <laughs> right. No, I don't think the game's over. They're... So this is, okay, this is kind of interesting. If you watch how both of these play HRE mirrors, they did this on Hill and Dale too. They both like to open up units and they do, I don't think I've ever seen Puppy or Wham go for a fast castle straight up. They always go a stable or stable in barracks, I've noticed. I wonder if Puppy's going to try to push his deer in now. Actually, that's a good idea. Let's look at the income per minute. We got almost, you know, let's roughly, it's roughly even for now. But once Wham puts some more villagers on here, it's going to bump up even more. Or it's going to bump up. But they're actually pretty even for the moment. Oh, okay. Puppy went, so Puppy decided to go for, um, what's it called? Oh, sorry guys, nose is a little itchy. Puppy's going for professional scouts, which means that he's going to have 100 less gold to get the castle. Probably looks stupid doing this, but man, my nose got like really itchy. So we see five villagers on gold for Puppy. How many for Wham? Only three, four. Wait, I can check here. Four. Oh, well, wait, never mind. I was about to say something stupid. But he did get the spear upgrade. So he recognized that Puppy was going for professional scouts and he's going to deny it. So Puppy's only going to get two deer at this point and he has no way to get more. He can go over here, which I'm pretty sure Wham has scouted. Yep, as expected, Wham has scouted that. We see a second stable coming out for Puppy. Interesting. So he scouted the horseman spear combo and he's still going to commit to a second stable. Let's look at Wham here. Now, Wham is investing more into this, and you can see that as his castleage is going to be delayed. We also see a little harass here that I missed. Puppy is going for castle, and he's going to be able to go castle here in just a moment. Just needs a little bit more gold, which will then allow him to get knights out, which will obviously hard counter the horsemen, and gives him a little bit of a boost to get that castleage. What, Pu what Wham's going to try to do, or at least this is my assumption, is he's going to try to use the spears and horsemen to deny the prelates from getting these relics. I do think he's going to struggle to deny this relic, just because this is really close to Puppy's base. Like, it's just right there. It's a little stroll in the park. He doesn't care. This prelate doesn't care. He's like, yeah, I'll go. And we see the Regnant's Cathedral coming out. And Puppy Paw is advancing with 14 villagers. And Wham sees this. Now that Wham is aware, he's also going to be going Castle Age, just a little bit behind Puppy. Looks like he's really gathering that food, though. Let's look at that income per minute. He's got 700 more food per minute. To be fair, Puppy's using most of his food villagers to build to get the Castle Age. And Wham is going with 16 villagers, all his food villagers, to get the Castle ASAP. We see this prelate kind of trying to sneak its way over to this relic. We see two horsemen coming to deny it, and professional scout the, or a scout died. We see one knight on the way, one horseman, and another prelate here. This is probably going to get denied. Got a horseman coming. Oh, oh, miss, oh, 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 oh my god! Did you guys see that? Yeah, you guys saw that. We just got the Wololo of the series there we go wham messed up there goes a relic for puppy paw puppy paws feeling fantastic he is loving his life right now and now we have puppy or i'm sorry we have wham just hitting the castle age now going to start making knights of his own once he gets the gold which he just needs to gather a little bit did puppy paw grab the second relic and yes that was a very that was very big is it always a two-player game? Uh, you can play team games and, and whatnot. There's a def many ways to play this game. Ooh, he is going to lose the, the prelate, though. Where's the other prelate? Oh, he just kept it at home. Interesting. Uh, whoa. Mouse lagged for a second there. Okay. Oh. Mouse is freaking out a little bit, but so you might see a little bit more jitteriness than normal. I apologize in advance. I'm not sure what's going on with my mouse. Okay. We see one. We see two relics for 
for Wham. And only one for Puppy at this point. Puppy needs to get this relic. Like, this is actually crucial. If Puppy does not get this relic, I think he loses this game. He needs to get the relic to have any chance of coming back into this series. Or, to make, to win this game. Ooh, loses a relic there. We see two horsemen. We see three horsemen here. A prelate. Wham's trying, or Puppy's doing some raiding. He needs to, he needs to scout this. If he loses this prelate, I think that's good. I think that could be game. I mean, let me rephrase. It's not game, but it's going to be really bad for him. Oh, no. Okay, that's, that should force him away. I think he's going to get this, though, with some micro. Pup, Wham can kill this. And it's dead. Oh, oh, risky. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The reverse Woolaloo. Oh, my God. That is two in a row for this series in this specific game. Puppy's feeling the pressure now. He knows he has to get this relic. If he doesn't get this relic, he's totally screwed. He does have a knight advantage. Uh, which is the only thing going which is a good thing going for him right now he's committing to this though oh come on come on puppy don't let him take this relic oh no yeah i think wham's gonna win i i think he could have denied this and he didn't oh puppy's looking for it let's look it will he see it will he see it oh no Oh, poor puppy. That relic. Oh, it's right there. I, I feel I feel for puppy here. He might fall. Oh, he might see it on the way back, though. He might see it on the way back. No! Oh, man. This is brutal. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, this is so sad. Can I get some sad in the chat? We need some Sag in the chat. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh, puppy didn't react. We need some big, we need mega Sages in the chat. Sorry, I've been so focused on that, I didn't see this raid. 34 villagers for Wham, 35 for puppy. <clears throat> and that relic made it. Wham has secured four relics in this game. Lots of death over here. Sorry for missing that fight, guys. Sag is a very sad... Think of it as a sad face. <laughs> Bias caster. Well, you know, we kind of want more games, right? <clears throat> Alright. So, with four relics for Wham... A little bit of a raid here, which is nice. But now Puppy, he is kind of in a control. And Puppy, GG's. Puppy realizes he lost the the Relic War. And uh, Wham is today's victor. A moment of silence for Puppy. But <clears throat> we did have some good games in that series. I think Wham was definitely on his A game today. <clears throat> There's a little bit of a bad spawn, I agree. But Wham was also, he was on his A game today. Like, compare his play today to Sunday, or Saturday, I, I feel like he was more on par today. Wham has just played that really, really well. Uh, we can see here, like, resource-wise, Puppy was ahead in the food count. But again, that, that relic difference was, it's uh, it's tilting. I'm sure Puppy was a bit tilted there, too. That's kind of a brutal couple of games there. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, I, I don't know how to do interviews. I don't think I'm going to do a, a winner interview. But I'll give I'll give a speech. I'll give a speech. Thank you, Wham and Puppy Fog, for playing. Appreciate it. I hope everyone enjoyed the matches. Definitely would recommend. Um, well, that's not me. Ooh, we don't want to look at my losses. What is going on there? 
let's look at Wham real quick. So I would say Gold Valley was a excellent game. I'd also say if you want to see how to play certain sieves, I think this high view match, French versus Roos, very educational from a French perspective. Um, I think the way Wham played that was really good. Uh, Dry Arabia. Again, I think this is another great way to see Mongols versus French. I think this showed how good or how to play Mongols versus French. And then uh, Lipany was just, you know, that's an HRE mirror. They both went for different openings. I think the Spears did a lot of damage. Um, and just kind of came down to relics. Unfortunate for Puppy Paw. I think he could have saved his his uh, his prelate if he'd had those horsemen on the relic instead of not. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Of course, I do appreciate all of you who tuned in. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm no professional caster. I've said that multiple times in this cast, but I hope you all enjoyed my casting to the best I could do. Uh, and again, thanks everyone for the follows and subs and whatnot. I do appreciate it. And uh, let's see, what else is there to talk about in this series? This mirror random one was like a crazy Mongolian Heights, which I think favored the China. Casting is actually really great for the same reason you're playing as you explained everything really well while it's happening. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let's see. What is, uh... It was an enjoyable Monday night. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Glad you guys enjoyed it.